Hey guys, so it's me Stephanie. I'm back. Um, today I'm going to be giving out um, tips on how to purchase your first home for people who are out there um, interested in that. Um, for those that don't know, I actually purchased my first home on my 30th birthday. It was actually literally I did the closing on my 30th birthday last year on May 24th, which was an experience of a lifetime for me. I'll never forget it. Um, but I want to give back now to people who may be unsure if they can buy a home or if they're just kind of like scared to start the process. Um, it, it, it can be like an intimidating process, but honestly, if you have everything in a row, you'll be good to go. So um, I'm going to give out five tips today, five little tips that can ensure you that your ride to your home ownership is successful. The first tip when buying your dream home is to know your credit score. I think everybody kind of knows that that is like the main thing you need to know. Most lenders want your credit score to be at least 620 and above. So you want to make sure that you have a credit score that is around that era. Honestly, I would say try to get it at least higher than that because credit scores drop and fall all the time depending on what's going on um, in the credit world that hits it. Um, I would say that a good app that I use religiously that helped me a lot was the MyFICO app. Um, it is like a small fee of like $30, but it does like tell you exactly what your credit score is. Um, I know a lot of people like to use Credit Karma because it's free, but with Credit Karma, it actually is a, they show you like your Vantage score, which a lot of lenders actually don't use the Vantage score. Another great thing about the MyFICO app is that it actually gives you the credit scores for all through credit bureau so for transunion experian equifax so you get to know exactly like where your credit score um for each one of them are because every mortgage lender is partnered with a different credit bureau so also when you whenever you choose like your mortgage lender make sure that you ask them specifically like who are you going to be pulling my credit from is it equifax is it transunion is it experian because that way you won't have to like buy the whole package for all three because um on the app it will ask you would you like to get your credit scores for all three if you know specifically that your lender is going to be pulling from equifax then just only buy the package for equifax and it'll save you a lot of money it saved me a lot of money so number two know your debt to income so um a lot of people um a lot of people don't actually know about this a lot of people just think their credit score has to be good but you have to have your debt to income that's like actually just as important as having your credit score if your debt to income is higher than the percentage of whatever type of loan that you're trying to get in you will most likely get declined in a way so um i know i think for like fha loan it's a little bit higher like your your percentage can be like 50 cent percent of your um debt to income and then if you're getting a conventional loan it's actually like it's actually a little bit lower it's like in the 40 percent um range but you know definitely check me on that stuff um but you can do like all of this stuff on your own and actually this is where credit karma actually comes in very very well when it comes down to credit karma i didn't use it when it came down to looking at my credit score but i did utilize it with seeing exactly what was on my report so you can see things like your auto loan your credit card student loans or things that you didn't even know they were on there like you know maybe some collections or whatever but this is where credit karma is extremely spot on because exactly what you see on credit karma is exactly what your mortgage lender will pull um, when they pull everything to do your debt to income another great feature that is on credit karma is um, you can also check to see what each creditor is reporting each month on how much you're paying them this actually is really important because it actually makes up your you know your debt to income um, ratio so if you're paying let's say for instance four hundred dollars each month for your car note you want to make sure that it's being reported that you're paying four hundred dollars um i know that a lot of time like with student loans um you know sometimes student loans payments can be outrageous so a lot of times a lot of people get in like programs to help them out to like lower their payments but one thing you definitely want to check when it comes to your student loans is making sure that they are actually reporting the actual amount you're paying because sometimes it will reflect like hey they're supposed to be paying a thousand dollars and you're actually only paying 170 so you want to make sure that you know that it's being reflected correctly because like i said that's what makes up your debt to income ratio and guys it's super simple to calculate your debt to income but one thing i want to stress is 
anything that is not on your credit report will not be added into your debt to income so if you have like a cable bill or you know a light bill or whatever it is if it's not reflected on your credit report it will not be added into your debt to income ratio so like i said that is a great thing because it kind of takes it down a little bit more um but um basically to add up your debt to income ratio all you need to do is um, add up the monthly expenses that are on your credit report for basically the amount that each creditor is saying that you owe and you would divide it by the gross amount of income that you're bringing in and gross means before taxes and that will give you the percentage of like your debt to income and where you are so number three make sure you have your finances in order and basically what I mean by that is making sure that you have like managed your checking account and your savings account accordingly so one thing that the lender will request is uh, i know for my my lender i'm going off of my experience but they did request three months of statements from all of my accounts just to get like a feel of how i manage my money so um you want to make sure like in your savings you have you know save enough that they can see that if something happens um you'll be able to pay them um and also they're also looking to see do you have enough money in there to pay for your down payment you know unless you're getting money from like another source um they want to see that you have that money in there and how long have you saved that money up so when it comes down to your checking account make sure that you are budgeting your money correctly and you don't overdraft a lot because that's like a main thing that the mortgage lender looks at when um looking at like those statements that i was speaking of um they just want to make sure that you can properly um, manage your money correctly because obviously they want to make sure that they're going to get their money back at the end of the day you know with the mortgage it is a huge lump sum that they're loaning out so they want to make sure that you're a good contender who is going to be able to pay them you know monthly and not run into any hiccups so step four making sure you have enough money set aside for your down payment and your closing costs um this kind of ties in with step three a little bit about knowing your finances but i kind of wanted to make this its own tip because this can be something that can really stop a lot of people in the buying process um i know this is something that i was like super worried about when i was going through because to be honest with the down payment and the closing costs um what I will say with the down payment you you do kind of know like what you'll need to be plan paying but closing cost is kind of up in the air and you don't really know that stuff until like kind of like the tail end of closing so you want to make sure that you have enough money set aside to um you know make sure that you can pay those expenses when they come up during the closing process so something else to note when it comes to closing costs and down payment is make sure that whatever you know source of funds that you have set aside for that make sure that you can explain where every source came from because if they see something where you deposited large sums of cash they do have the right to ask you where did these funds come from can you give us documentation and it's best to just you know go with the flow give them you know explain what it is um give them as much documentation on it because if you don't it can really slow up your process and ultimately you can be denied your loan also when it comes to down payment in some situations um i know that family members like your mom your dad um, sister whoever sometimes people will give out um down payment gifts and that basically just means like um, someone is basically giving you the money for your down payment which is actually really nice that I mean I actually had someone who gifted me I actually had two people who, who gifted me um, down payment money um, if this is um, your situation you want to make sure whoever is gifting you this money make sure their finances are in order as well because the mortgage lender does have the right to request their bank statements as well because like I said they're trying to make sure that all the money is coming from a legitimate place and also they want to make sure that this person has enough money in the bank to give you this money as well also you know something else to know is that sometimes I know some people just aren't as fortunate to have someone give them money and sometimes it is hard to um, save up a big large sum of money because it is it is a large sum of money when when it comes down to closing I think for me um, when it came down to like down payment and closing costs it was like roughly like around like ten thousand dollars that I had to pay out of pocket so um, 
a lot of people just don't have enough money to save up for that and they don't have anyone gracious enough to give them that money so there are a lot of other options like there are a lot of um like a lot of programs out there that will actually give first home owners um, money i found a lot of them unfortunately i just didn't qualify because you have to be under a certain amount that you bring in and i was i was over it but um i will actually leave all of the information in the description box because i know that can probably help a lot of people because like i said down payment and closing costs it can be a lot but don't let that stop you another um tip that i'm going to give out um when it comes to closing costs and down payment is when you're negotiating for your home in the on the front end this is something that i actually did and it it, it took down a lot when it came to closing costs in the end is negotiate um that the buyer actually pays some of the closing costs so when i was um bidding for my home um in the bid i put that hey i want the buyer to basically pay five thousand dollars of my closing costs which in return the buyer accepted that so like i said during closing my closing costs which includes down payment was roughly like around ten thousand so it took it down to five and some family members actually gave me gifts for down payment so it only left me with two thousand dollars to pay for um, my closing costs out of my personal pockets so there are other alternatives to getting that cost down and tip five um you want to make sure that tip one tip two tip three and tip four are in order before you go and search for your dream home um i know that a lot of people will go and search for homes and fall in love with them but their credit score isn't good their debt to income is, is shot you know you want to make sure these things are in order because you don't want to go and find like the house of your dreams and fall in love with it but everything else is a mess um a story that i would like to tell is uh, from my experience um i actually started looking for a home like early 2018 like around february 2018 and i actually went and i was actually pre-approved for a home and i actually you know started to look for homes and things like that and i actually found um a place that i really really loved and what stopped me was in the process was just like the down payment like i got to that part and i was like oh wow like i didn't realize like i needed this much money saved up so i kind of stopped the process to just make sure that i could save up a little bit more um but it sucks because i really really love this place like i really really wanted it and then um once i got like all of my money saved up that was good to go for the down payment i started back looking again in april so when i started looking again um, i asked my realtor you know um what's the home that i fell in love with like was it still on the market and you know he was like no you know um i think someone just actually put a bid in on it and i was like really like i my heart was my heart was like totally crushed so like in the back of my mind i was like still like fixated on this home but i was trying to find something else and um he actually opened up a portal for me where you can actually see homes and i could see that home on there and i could see that okay someone was going through the process with it and i'll never forget i was over at my sister's house we were drinking wine i was looking at the portal and i saw the home and it said that it was like basically the people had dropped out of the bid and the, the home was back on the market and that was like i mean it, it was like the, my stars like 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 ah! <laughs> basically opened up for me i'll never forget i actually like i think i called i think it was like 10 o'clock that night and i called my realtor and i was like oh my god oh my god bill i was like i see the house is back on the market i was like is this true so he was just like and he was like, honestly my, my realtor was honestly amazing like my thing is he was answering my calls like on a friday night at 10 o'clock <laughs> um and um but he was like, you know, let me check in the morning and, you know, let's make sure that, it's, you know, it's all good. So the next morning he checked and it was on the market. I put my bid in. I got what I wanted. I was, I mean, I was super lucky, you know, because I was the person who did exactly what I'm advising you guys not to do. Like, don't go look for a home because sometimes you, I mean, a lot of times you probably won't be as lucky as I was in the end. Um, it's best to have everything in, you know, all your ducks in the row. So once you go out there, you, um... To find your home and your process can be smooth and obviously the home that i'm speaking of is my home that i'm sitting in right here that i bought um 
I fell in love with this home, guys. I just, this, this house is just everything to me. It sits in the community that I've rented in forever. Um, I love, what, what made me actually really love this home is um, I was like super fixated on being in a high rise because I was already in a high rise downtown. So, um, I never forget my realtor was telling me like, oh, I have this mid rise. I think you're going to like it. It has like everything that you want. And I was just like, I don't want to, I don't know about that. And when I, when I stepped in it, totally fell in love with it. I'm a big person who loves natural light. I love space um, because, you know, obviously I live by myself, but I do have my two cats. So I want them to be able to walk around and roam as much as they can and get their leg room in. Um, so I couldn't be happier. But guys, thank you so much for joining in on my video today about my five tips on how to become um, a home buyer. Um, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our page. And if you do like content like this, make sure that you comment below and also, you know, tell us things that you want to see more of us to do. If you like um, seeing like content like this, let us know if you want to see just things that we haven't even done yet. Um, let us know that as well. Um, but thank you guys so much. I've enjoyed it. Bye.